Hello everyone, welcome back to the Let's Make a Python Discord bot from Scratch series. This is episode 3. In the last episode, we created a more advanced online message, learned a little bit about strings in Python, and created a basic Discord embedded message. In this episode, we will start by creating a basic command using the commands extension for Discord, then we will use that command to build a full restart function for the bot that allows you to restart your bot on the fly. Just a quick reminder as always for you guys, if you guys have not seen episode one or two before this, I highly recommend that you go watch those first because we will be starting with our code where we left off from the previous episode. Also just a quick disclaimer for you guys, both this episode and the next one might be a little bit longer because we're going through setting up kind of the framework systems that allow our bot to be iterated and developed on quickly. Um, so in the future, things will be probably much shorter, but this one and the next one will probably be a little bit longer. All right, so the first thing that I want to address is cleaning up a few parts of our code. In a lot of places, we have parts of our code, like for example, our discord.color object that we're using to set the color of our uh, embed message that we probably want to be repeated for just about every embedded message. So what we can go ahead and do is create an attribute for our bot object. So in our case, I'm going to call it embed color. You can name this whatever you'd like. This is just a variable name, it's sort of arbitrary, but I'm, I like embed color just because it tells you exactly what it is. And we are assigning that to our bot. So we're gonna say our bot.embed color is going to equal this. And so now we have our discord.color object assigned to bot.embed color. So now down here, we can just go ahead and type in bot.embed color. And that's that. Now, your first instinct might be to try and do the same thing for the time step timestamp object right here but that's not a good decision because what happens is if i were to say bot.timestamp right here and i were to assign this to our date time object this date time object would never be updated it would always be the exact same so every single embedded message we sent would have the exact same timestamp in it so in our case that needs to stay alone however for our footer both the text and icon url i want to say the same a lot so i can go ahead and say bot.footer equals and i can say bot.footer image equals, and I can go ahead and take these and paste them in up there as well. So now down here, I can just say text equals bot.footer and icon URL equals bot.footer image. And now we have all of our variables kind of rearranged and able to be reused pretty easily. There's one more change I want to make though. I want to set our log channel to a bot.log channel because that way our log channel is now accessible throughout the rest of our code and we don't have to uh, get the channel every time that we want to send a message to the log channel. So I can say wait bot.log channel dot send. All right, so now we've cleaned up our code a little bit, things are a little more organized and we can get started making commands. So to do this, we're gonna be using our commands extension. Now to get started with this, we're gonna create a decorator that says at bot dot command and what this will do is it's defining the function that's going to follow this as a command that the bot will use however this one needs parentheses unlike the decorators up here because here we can pass in some more information like name and this will be the name of our command in this case we're going to call it restart and what this means is that if we use exclamation mark because that's our prefix we have and we're to use restart that's, that's telling it that this is the command. So by using exclamation mark restart, it knows that because this name is set to restart, that's what it's going to be. And then I, we will add a second argument, which I will call aliases. And aliases is going to be set to square brackets. And what square brackets are in Python is a list. So in our case, we can have one, two, three, four, for example, this is, a, this is just showing what a list is. And this is a list object. It has a list of elements. In this case, we have integers, one, two, three, four, and this could be one, 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 three, four, one, eleven, three, four, whatever you feel like. And it could be strings. So like we have string object number one. It could be a length of one. It could, you could have multiple items. You could have however many you want, really. Uh, and it can be any type of variable, any type of object, whatever you feel like. In this case, we're gonna create a, it's gonna be a list object of strings because those are other versions of our command that we can use. So now both exclamation mark restart and exclamation mark r will work because we have r set as an alias. So both of these are completely valid versions of using this command. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set one more thing, which is going to be help. 
And what this will mean is that our help command will be able to read this from our command definition and use it. So this will also allow us to just keep track of the commands that we have available in the bot and make them more available in the help message that we're going to use. Now down below that, we're going to say async def because we're defining our function. And this function can be called whatever you'd like. However, because of consistency reasons, I'm going to go ahead and call it just restart. And now inside of restart here, we need to give it a, an input. So whenever you add something inside of the parentheses on a function, we didn't need to up here, but here we do. That's because we are going to have an argument passed into this function that we can then use. So in this case, we have CTX, which is a context object. And what the context object contains is the original uh, information about the command that's being used. So in our case, when someone uses exclamation mark restart, context will contain uh, the author of the command uh, as a user object. It'll contain the channel object of the channel that it came from. It'll contain the message object of the message that was sent. It'll contain the command object for the command that's getting triggered. It'll contain all the information we could possibly need to respond to that user and use in our command as possible. So in our case, we're just going to go ahead and say await ctx.send. And what this will do is it'll take our context and it'll send to that context. So in this case, it'll send to the channel the command is used in a response. So if I were to go into Discord now and I were to type in exclamation mark restart, I would get a response sent to me, just a simple text in the channel from the bot. That's all that does right now. And that wouldn't matter what channel I used in, it would respond in the channel that I sent the command in. So if you need to send, have a command in place that you use a command and it just gives you a simple text response, or if you wanted to create an embed object and give a simple embed response, you could do that too. Those are, that, that's the easiest way to give a simple command and response. However, we are trying to do a little more than that. We are trying to create a restart command that will actually restart our bot. So in order for our bot to actually restart, we need to shut the bot off. So to do this, we will say await bot.close. And what this will do is it'll make the bot stop running any of commands that it's running, and it will close the bot, which will trigger the end of our Python code. However, there's no indication that the bot is getting stopped right now. So what we want to do also is create an embed object, which is going to be embed equals discord.embed. I'm going to set the title. We're going to do a little more string formatting here. We're going to say title is going to be bot.user.name restarting. And we're going to go ahead and say that color is going to equal our bot.embed color. And we don't have to type out this whole thing again because we just uh, set it as a variable up above there. And we can go ahead and say the timestamp equals date time dot date time dot now date time dot time zone dot utc. And you could copy this from here if you wanted. It's the exact same thing. All right, below that we'll say embed dot set footer. However, this is going to be exactly the same as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy it and paste it in. And now we want to send this message to our logs channel so that we can keep track of when the bot is going to be restarting and when it's shutting itself down, just so you know when that's happening. So we say await oh bot.log channel dot send. And again, that's because we set the log channel as a bot variable right here. And say embed equals embed. So now we're sending a message to our log channel telling us that the bot is restarting whenever the restart is command is used. And now in this case, I'd actually like to know who is restarting our command. So we're going to change up our embed a little bit and we're going to add another field to it. We're going to go ahead and say embed set author. And we're going to set the name of the author. It's going to be ctx. Oh, not in a string, sorry. ctx.author. So we're taking our context and we're getting the command author from that. And we're going to say dot author dot name. So what this is going to do is it's going to take the author of the command and it's going to take their name and it's going to set that as the author's name. And then I also would like to set uh, is it icon URL, I believe this one is. And this is going to be ctx.author.avatar URL. So this will take the profile image of the author of the command and enter that in as well. Um, so now we've set the author of our embedded message. 
And so this will all get sent into the restart command, and I'll show you what the set author part looks like after we uh, run this in a little bit. However, as of right now, whenever you send a restart command, it's going to send a message to the logs channel, of course. Um, but there's no indication in the channel you use the command in that the command's actually working. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a reaction to your command using an emoji to tell you that it's successfully executing the program. So in our case, we can say await ctx.message. So now we are taking the message object from our context and we're going to add a reaction to it. However, we have to actually give it an emoji to add a reaction with. So in our case, we can go ahead and pull up Discord and I can say, I want to use the white check mark, for example. And if you go ahead and take that emoji and add a backslash right before it, and then send that as a message, it'll send the Unicode format. Um, this only works for emojis that are actually available in Unicode, like available, the, the Discord default emojis essentially. So like, for example, if I were to use a custom emote like this one, and I were to add a backslash before that, it's gonna send the custom emote ID, and you can't, you cannot just copy and paste this in. This would have to be done a little bit differently. But in our case, I'm gonna go ahead and take this check mark, copy it, and I'm going to directly go ahead and paste that in right here. And that's it. So now we have our restart function, function, excuse me, completely done. So this is going to happen where whenever a user uses the restart command, it is going to create an embed object, send that to our log channel, add a reaction to our command message, and then shut the bot down. So that's the entirety of our Python code done. Now we have to deal with writing scripts that actually run in your operating system in order to get the system fully functional because there's not a way to directly restart and actually update all of the code within your files using Discord. Um, so to do this, we're gonna jump over to the folder and I'm going to go ahead and create a text document and again, make sure that you have your file name extensions turned on. And I'm going to call this start.bat. And this is this is for the Windows version. So for Windows, you're going to create start.bat. If you are on Linux or in a Mac system or something other than Windows, really, you're going to create a start.sh. So what this is, is that the start part can be whatever. I just like to use start because it makes more sense. Um, but .bat is for Windows and .bat sh is for other systems this is a shell script and a batch script and now in our editor we're going to go ahead and start with the windows one we can go ahead and pull this open we're going to type colon loop and this is going to define a point where our program loops and we're going to type in python main.py and what this means is we're going to actually be executing our program of course and then once python main.py is done running meaning our bot has shut down it's going to go to the next step which is going to be typing timeout forward slash t5. What this is gonna do is it's going to wait for five seconds. Um, yeah, that's, you don't really need to know the in-depth functionality of that because you're never gonna see this again after this is done basically. And now we can say go to loop. So what this is gonna do is gonna say, uh, we're defining a loop point here. We are running our Python code. As soon as our Python code ends, we're gonna wait for five seconds and we're gonna go back up here to loop and then run it again. And then if for some reason something breaks and it all goes down the drain, we are going to pause so that it doesn't close itself so we can actually keep track of what the error is. Because if you can't see the error, it's pretty hard to fix the error. All right, so that's the entirety of the Windows version. So now let's jump over to the .sh file and try to make the Linux version. So we're gonna start off by typing S uh, hashtag exclamation mark forward slash bin forward slash sh. And this is defining it as a shell script. And we're going to say timeout equals 5s. And I actually am not going to include spaces here. Timeout equals 5 seconds. And I can say while colon semicolon do. And it's just going to create a loop system here. We're going to say python main.py. And we're going to say echo restarting in timeout. And this is going to say, this is just a print statement essentially. So we're gonna say restarting in, in this case, five seconds. And now we're gonna actually sleep 
timeout, and this will actually make the program stop for five seconds. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit done right at the end of that. And what this will do is it'll say, this is basically going to be an infinite loop. So as long as your shell shift is running, it's going to run Python. As soon as Python's done running, it's going to print restarting in this amount of time, and then it's going to restart. All right, so now we can go back into our folder here. And for Windows, you'll be able to just go ahead and double click this file to run it. For Linux and other systems, it's a little more complicated. We're going to open up a command prompt in here, and we're gonna type in chmod755 dot sword slash start dot sh now for me this isn't gonna this is like it's not gonna be impactful at all it's not gonna do much really um but for you guys actually you know, i guess this is how that's gonna work yes yeah, so you type in chmod 75 forward slash start uh, start dot sh and you can do dot forward slash start dot sh um does it work when i do this no okay so in my case, because I'm on a Windows system, it's gonna pop up this whole other thing. Uh, but for you guys, you would just type in start.sh and it would run right there. And that for Linux systems is how you would actually run your code. So you'd open up your command prompt and type in start.sh. Um, yeah, ignore all that stuff. Now for me, all I have to do, I don't need any command prompt or anything. I can just go ahead and double click on start.bat. It's gonna pull it up and run our Python command after a second it will say logged in as tutorial bot so now if we go jump over to discord you'll see right here in bot logs tutorial bot is online and what this means is that now our restart command when i send it what we should see we should see a few things happen one the bot should go offline after a second it should send a message in the bot logs channel and it should respond to our command with a reaction and then if I quickly jump over to our command prompt, we should see it counting down while it restarts. So in my case, I put it in, you'll see the reactions added, message was sent, bot is offline, and here you'll see it's counting down, two, one, and then it starts booting back up again. And you'll see it's coming back online, log back in again. You'll see here, tutorial bot restarting, tutorial bot online, and here it is back online again. And you'll see in our restarting message right here, um, it says right here, there's the author, which is Herocross underscore HM, that's me, and it has my avatar image. So this is how you can set an author and where the author field shows up in your embedded messages. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this tutorial this time, guys. If everything worked, your code should now be running. We'll be able to open up Discord and see everything working. Um, as always, something hasn't worked correctly, try and go back through the video to find your error or look for a typo in your code. However, if everything worked for you, congratulations you're making more progress. We have a full restart system. So now we can edit our code and then just use the restart command without having to shut the whole bot down and turn it all back on again manually. So next time we're gonna be talking about how to keep your bot token safe so it doesn't get published publicly. And also we're gonna talk about creating a config file, uh, which are two separate things. So of course, if you guys have found this helpful, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. On another note, my Discord server should be all up and running at the time of this video going live, so check the description for the invite link, and as always, take it easy guys, and I'll see you in the next one.